During our field research, we were particularly interested in looking at how climate change was recorded because from about 7,000 to 3,000 BCE, the climate there in the Arabian Peninsula was quite different because of the change in monsoon patterns. So it was much more like a savanna, like in Kenya, and uh, there were rivers flowing and lakes. So we knew this would impact the Neolithic people who were hunter gatherers as well as pastoralists. So we looked at the species of animals that were present. And we saw, so far we've seen three species that do not occur in the desert. And those are the aurochs, which is the wild cattle that domestic cattle originally, uh, eventually came from. And then there are the onagers, or the wild Asian asses, that are in Central Asia and the Near East today. And then we just discovered last week that there was a species of oryx, which have these long scimitar horns, that was unknown in the Arabian Peninsula before, but which lives in the savanna in Africa. I'm a zooarchaeologist who all my life has studied the animal bones from archaeological sites, and now I'm looking at their depictions in art. And it's a lot of fun for me because I can see details, like for example, I can see that they use the Canaan breed of dog. It's unchanged to today. So it has spiked ears and a very curly tail and a white face and breast um, depicted in the rock art. So I could never tell all of those things from the bones. And I've spent my life studying uh, horse domestication and the human-horse relationship. So I was very happy to see that there are many depictions of horses, including the Arabian horse. I've been tracking that as a breed, which was developed for chariotry. And we can see a lot about how the people used the horses for pulling chariots, for riding in warfare, for cavalry and what the horses look like in great detail.